Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Victoria Aguirre and Victor Guerrero. Perderte de 
después. For the past 20 years, AUSL has worked tirelessly to bring equity to education and transform educational outcomes for students in Chicago's most chronically underinvested neighborhoods. Guided by the belief that all students should have access to an excellent education right in their own neighborhood, AUSL pioneered a teacher training program and managed a network of schools inside the third largest school district in the country. Visitors from around the world came to Chicago to see AUSL's whole student-centered approach. Caring principals, compassionate teachers, and involved parents, caregivers, and guardians. What they saw were results, and it changed the perception of what was possible. New leadership, motivated teachers, consistent curriculum, Additional student supports and after-school programs all working together to support AUSL's holistic model to care for the whole child. It all began in 2001 when Mike Koldyke founded the Chicago Teacher Residency, an innovative teacher training program designed to train and educate career changers. Residents obtained a master's degree while spending an entire school year in the classroom under the guidance of a master teacher. Since 2003, the CTR had graduated over 1,200 well-trained, compassionate teachers. A pipeline of highly qualified teachers funneling into underperforming schools changed the culture, setting a new trajectory for those schools and the students in them. This success paved the way for an agreement to expand AUSL's partnership with Chicago Public Schools to manage and operate 31 of the lowest performing schools. Under AUSL's leadership, Two-thirds of those schools move from the district's lowest rating to level one or level one plus, with many approaching the national average for math and English language arts proficiency rates. And yet, there is still work to be done. Based on our history of successes, AUSL is leveraging our experiences in providing equity in education beyond Chicago to other cities through our advisory services. As we look back on AUSL's tremendous impact, Let's hear from some of the people who were instrumental in its inception. I first heard about AUSL when one of its leaders, Mike Koldyke, came in to see me when I was chairman of the Chicago Public Schools. His idea was to create a new path for leadership to be principals in Chicago Public Schools. I thought it was a fantastic idea, and that began our partnership with AUSL, where we gave them the old Wright Junior College to work from. Hi. I'm Dr. Heather Anakini, and I'm the CEO of the Chicago Public Education Fund. In 2003, the fund provided an initial seed investment to help support the creation of a very successful teacher residency program. Today, we are recognizing that very same organization. Over the last 20 years, AUSL has created valuable opportunities for real-time mentorship for thousands of CPS teachers. As a former Westside teacher myself, I know how critical it, critical it is to support soon-to-be and early career teachers in the art and science of teaching and learning. I've also seen firsthand the faith that AUSL puts in its educators as community leaders. I know that faith comes from the top. As a former principal, Doc's leadership has always been rooted in the connection that great educators make with their students and families. Those relationships can and often do last a lifetime. They are what makes the job of teaching so fulfilling and are the reason that teachers stay in the AUSL community. That is also a real testament to the care with which the organization selects new residents and the support it gives new teachers in developing their craft. 
The fun team and I look forward to continuing to work with AUSL and all the educators affiliated with the organization for many years to come. When you think about retirement, you think about people going over to Florida or to the Southwest and playing on golf and stuff like that or whatever. Mike could have done anything when he retired. He knew this was a great city, a great country. And from his place of privilege, he had an obligation to open the door to the opportunity. And he dedicated himself to this one idea. And like a soldier who just kept going, he never gave up on that. And to the AUSL, I wouldn't want to call it army, but the cadre of parents and teachers, et cetera, um, they took something and it was just an idea and through sheer force of will made it a reality. And thousands of kids' lives are different today because of Mike Goldite, AUSL, the teachers, the principals, and uh, we're, we're, a better, we're a better city for it. Hello, my name is Phyllis Lockett and I am the CEO of Leaf Innovations. Congratulations to AUSL for 20 years of transformative impact in education in Chicago and across this country. I have nothing but praise for Don Feinstein, Mike Holdyke, and the entire AUSL team for transforming public education as we know it with the first turnaround model in the country. I had the pleasure of working with AUSL in my former role as CEO of New Schools for Chicago, where we worked with Don and his team to replicate one of the first public schools in Chicago. Uh, we replicated a high school in the North Lawndale community, and it was a great model for us to continue that work with Disney Two and so many others uh, in the new school's work that we had an opportunity to partner on. My second opportunity in working with AUSL was uh, with the Stack School of Excellence, where we worked with Miyoshi Knox, uh, the, the former principal there, and their phenomenal team in Inglewood to transform their model into a personalized learning model. And I have to say, um, the Stack School of Excellence was a beacon for so many Chicago public schools to advance in the innovation space to transform their model from one that is was one size fits all to one that is tailoring learning to every single student. And the work there was, was absolutely transformative and um, helped to inform and be a beacon, not only for the USL community, but for many other uh, Chicago public schools that we've been able to work with. So your team is outstanding, the, the leadership, the academies, the, the, the talent that you have fueled throughout our city is, is bar none. And I am personally grateful for all that you all have accomplished. Um, this city would not uh, be where it is in terms of education without you. And I just wanna thank you personally for being a great partner and um, for all the incredible work uh, that you've done to date. And I look forward to more uh, going forward in the future. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Arnie Duncan, and I want to wish AUSL a happy 20th birthday. I can't believe it's been 20 years, and wish you even more success in the next 20 years to come. And the model of AUSL is so critically important, it may seem simple, I actually think it's brilliant, it's, it's genius. Creating great educational opportunities for the kids and the communities that are most underserved, working with every child in that school, in that community, bringing in fantastic teachers, but training them as the true professionals they are, just like medical professionals train future doctors, having them apprentice with a master teacher, and then bringing all that talent to the kids and communities that have historically been underserved. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for changing lives. Thank you for creating hope and opportunity in communities that desperately need that. And going forward, anything I can do to help you continue to scale, to grow, to be more impactful, please know I'm all in. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Oh, it's a room full of educators. Oh, I so appreciate this. Thank you so much. 
My name is Ana Belaval. I am from WGN Morning News, and I have the honor of being your MC this evening. For the Academy for Urban School Leadership's 20th anniversary benefit dinner, 20 years of transforming lives in and beyond the classroom. And let's get another big round of applause for our performers. You just heard, yes, Victoria Aguirre and Victor Guerrero with a beautiful rendition of Besame Mucho. The best part about this is that Victoria and Victor are both alumni of Solorio Academy. where they honed their talents playing with the school's jazz band, which precisely is the jazz band that welcomed you this evening into this gorgeous ballroom so we can celebrate vaccinated and safe, or at least COVID negative tests. The very, so, so what's awesome too, and this is what impressed me when I visited Solorio Academy about four years ago, is the amount of students that go to college after graduation. And I've been a reporter in Chicago for 25 years. And when I first arrived in Chicago, I worked for Univision, which focuses on the Latino community. And I grew up in a, I had the blessing of growing up in Puerto Rico. Um, no one? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know we're at the Four Seasons, but They'll take our card away if we don't identify. <laughs> and I had the blessing of um, being part of a family that taught me that going to college was a given, that that was the next step after you were a senior in high school, and that my parents would do anything to get me to go to higher education. When I got here and I interviewed so many students that just saw high school as the finish line, it was very sad for me because I knew that their future wasn't going to be as bright as mine. I understood that a lot of it was lack of information and a lot of it was lack of mentoring. So for me to go to Solorio Academy and see those students that look and sound like me thinking about a brighter future and getting scholarships by the thousands, the hundreds of thousands, to go to so many institutions so that they could become the role models of students like them in the future, I mean, that was inspiring. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the work you do. So case in point, Victoria is now attending the Art Institute of Chicago and Victor is pursuing a graduate degree, I don't have that, in music education at North Park University. So when you visit one of the AUSL schools, you can tell that these educators, these administrators know how important this work is. I saw it at Solorio. I met their principal, Victor Iturralde, and everyone there was 100% committed to the present and the future of these students. They knew the important work they were doing. So thanks again for being here, for showing up in person and online, some people are uh, logging in from home and supporting AUSL. We have a great evening ahead of us. It is now my pleasure to introduce Ken Miller and Raj Vora. Ken is a partner. Let me give you their pedigree. It's time to show off. I'm gonna humble brag for them. Ken is a partner at Ken Muchen Roseman. I probably butchered that. And Rosh is a partner at Metric Point Capital. In addition to their day jobs, of course, Ken and Raj are both active members of the AUSL board. And this year, they took on the important task of co-chairing this event. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ken Miller and Raj Vora. Good evening. 
I'm Ken Miller, and I would like to thank all of you for attending tonight's benefit dinner. I would also like to thank all of our sponsors for their support, especially our principal sponsors, Aon and Healthcare Services Corporation. I am proud that I have been a member of the AUSL board for over 18 years. When I joined the board, we were managing just two schools, the Chicago Academy in Dodge, and operating the CTR. I was very honored that Mike Koldyke wanted me to be part of his vision for improving the education being provided by Chicago Public Schools and the lives of so many Chicago children. AUSL's progress and results during our first four, 20 years has been amazing. Here's to the next 20. It has been a privilege to be co-chair of tonight's dinner and to work with the AUSL board and the AUSL staff over the last 18 years. I want to make a special mention of Mike Holdike and Bob King. Serving on the board with you has been very special. I also want to thank Raj Vora, my dinner co-chair and friend, and the AUSL development staff for all of their work that they put into tonight's dinner. Your commitment. Your commitment, passion, and professionalism are top notch. Thanks a lot, Ken. And good evening, everybody. Um, as Ken mentioned, I'm Raj Vora, and it's been an, an absolute pleasure to help plan this and to be co chairing the dinner next to Ken, uh, even though he's a White Sox fan. I want to first echo Ken's comments and welcome everybody here. Uh, we appreciate everybody's valuable time and it's just super awesome and refreshing to be, to be back in person. Uh, I've been a proud AUSL board member for two years now and ordinarily my wife Nisha would be by my side. Um, it's been about six, seven years since we've been coming to this dinner and supporting the organization more broadly. Uh, it's truly been amazing working with Mike Z, David Chandler, Brian Doyle, Greg Wasson, Cardell, Shane, and of course Doc, amongst many, many others who I did not mention across the board and the staff. Uh, my better half would actually be here tonight. Um, she's attending to our now five-day-old son. <laughs> so welcome, uh, welcome to Shalin uh, with a little bit of a fist bump for everybody here in the room. Uh, in spite of uh, sleep deprivation and diapers that are seemingly always full, luckily mom and our eight and a half pound chunky monkey are doing great. Uh, big sister is super excited as well, and it's my first and perhaps last night out for quite a while. <laughs> On a serious note, as we look ahead to all of our children's futures, which ties directly into why I joined the board, it really comes back to an intense focus on hard work and education along with equalizing an increasingly diverse playing field across so many levels and in a city as complicated as this one. Everybody op uh, deserves opportunities in life and no different than healthcare, access to a fair system is paramount. Uh, the consistent dedication and passion required by all the key constituents of AUSL is unmatched and it's that contagious energy, particularly from the kids and through driving results that are with and ultimately for them that is so fulfilling to be a part of, uh, part of this group. And at the end of the day, as simple as this sounds, we're all teachers and students, so let's aspire to share in that knowledge base. Ken and I, to wrap, are both very humbled and privileged to serve on the board. We hope that tonight's celebration will provide you with some deep insights into AUSL's incredible work over the past two decades. Thank you. Thank you, Ken and Raj, and congratulations, Raj. Mazel tov. Oh, you didn't know I knew that. <laughs> yeah. It is my pleasure now to introduce our next speaker, Cardell Spangler. Cardell is a Chicago managing partner at Winston & Strawn LLP and was recently named a Crane's Chicago Business Notable Nonprofit Board Leader as the current co-chair of the AUSL board, Cardell strongly advocates that all students should receive a quality education. Please welcome Cardell Spangler.
Thank you, Anna. Uh, as the co-chair of the board, I want to first take the opportunity to thank my fellow board members who were able to make it today. Uh, my co-chair, Mike Savarosky, Sherry Carter, Jamie Cowie, I'm not sure where everybody is, so if you kind of like raise your hand, that'd be great. Uh, Brian Doyle, Munu Gandhi, Bob King, Anthony Miller, Steve Pemberton, Greg Wasson, and of course our co-chairs for this incredible event, Ken Miller and Raj Vora, and our newest board member representing Aeon, Jennifer Chung. Um, and of course our associate board founder, Charlie Waddell. I'd also like, Charlie absolutely deserves a round of applause for all of his work. Um, I'd also like to give my heartfelt appreciation to our honorary chairs, Jack and Donna Greenberg. As founding members of this important event, Donna and Jack, we are immensely grateful for your passionate support and leadership in amplifying AUSL's leadership in this city. This fall, Chicago Public School students return to full-time in-person learning for the first time in 17 months. We are so grateful for the heroic efforts our school leaders and educators, some of whom are here uh, with us tonight, have put forth. We all know that under-resourced communities on the south and west sides experience a disproportionate amount of trauma, of illness and loss, as well as food, housing, and economic insecurity. The cumulative impact of these obstacles raises concern for students, especially low-income children of color and those with special needs. The key to helping children regain their academic and social-emotional footing lies at the heart of the classroom teachers. Well-trained, highly effective teachers bring academic rigor to classrooms and skill and compassion to understand and address the effects the stress, trauma, and loss of the past year and a half will have on learning. Unfortunately, our nation has been grappling with a teacher shortage for years. The issue is especially severe in Illinois. The state has lost half of its educator preparation program since 2012. Fewer programs have translated to fewer graduates and fewer teachers. In 2012, there were 11,000 graduates. In 2017, there were just under 5,000. This 50% decline was the largest in the nation. The teacher shortage is especially high in urban school districts where educators are leaving the classroom at an alarming rate. A solution for Chicago is to grow its teacher pipeline by supporting teacher training programs that have a record of recruiting, training, and retaining highly effective teachers, including teachers of color and those who can meet the needs of diverse learners. An essential approach to meeting this need is through investment in public-private partnerships that recruit and train excellent educators committed to serving our most at-risk students. The Chicago Teacher Residency Program, a partnership between AUSL, Chicago Public Schools, and DePaul University, has a proven track record of success. One of the first and most successful programs of its kind, the CTR recruits, trains, and retains high-quality teachers and leaders committed to equity and culturally responsive education. To date, we've graduated 1,218 teachers from the CTR. In addition to celebrating our educators tonight, we are honoring the leadership and commitment of philanthropists Mike and Robin Zafarovsky. as well as corporate champion, Greg Case, CEO of Aon. <laughs> Mike, Robin, Greg, and Aon have been instrumental to AUSL's success and their contributions bring equity in education. Our success is largely due to our public-private partnership model. 
HCSC is a great example of a corporate partner that believes in equity in education. This year, HCSC has renewed their commitment by returning as a principal sponsor. We are grateful to all the sponsors who have responded to the call and agree that equity in education should not be a privilege, but is a right of every child in Chicago, no matter what neighborhood they live in. I would like to close by thanking all of you for your support and your continued belief in the powerful impact of AUSL. Thank you and enjoy the following video. At HCSC, the nation's largest customer-owned health insurer, we are committed to making an impact by standing with our members and increasing access to quality health care at work, for individuals and families, and in Medicare and Medicaid. Deeply rooted in our communities, offering health care coverage in every zip code in Illinois, Montana, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas collaborating with our network healthcare providers, uniting diverse talent in our company, acting as a force multiplier with partners on the ground in our communities to improve health and well-being with sustainable, lasting solutions to big challenges, making an impact for our members, our customers, our communities. We are going to take a short break so everyone can enjoy their dinner. Those of you watching at home will be able to see some more information about the history and the accomplishments of AUSL over the past 20 years. Now, I haven't hit you up for money yet. This is when I do it, okay? This is a fundraiser. It is a benefit. We've been very fancy. We've used all our manners but now it's when we need you. So you can donate via your phone, or you can also look at our virtual silent auction. There are some great items there, and you give with a purpose, and you get something in return, which is not what my Catholic mother said you should do, but whatever. You live with your own guilt. Enjoy your dinner. We have a lot more coming up, but buen provecho, buen appetit, and I will be back.
I, I am so sorry to interrupt your dinner, but we're going to move things along. I hope you are enjoying your meal and that you had a chance to donate via your phone or check out the silent auction items, maybe donate that way. Now, we would like to thank tonight's other principal sponsor for the commitment to our community. Aon is in the business of better decisions. We believe that businesses thrive when the communities they serve and the people they employ also flourish by leveraging what's uniquely Aon, our insights, analytics, and talented colleagues. We work to mitigate risk and improve the health and vitality of individuals and communities around the world. But our commitment to service extends beyond our day-to-day -day business responsibilities. Aligned under our firm's focus on the biggest challenges facing society, we put our passion and expertise to work by responding to the needs of our communities through financial contributions, volunteer efforts, and matching gifts. The why of what we do matters. It matters to our clients. It matters to our colleagues. It matters to the communities we operate in and it matters to the organizations we support. At Aon, we shape decisions for the better to protect and enrich the lives of people around the world. Visit Aon.com to discover how we're making a social impact in communities worldwide. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just kidding. So, good evening everyone. My name is Alexa Uribe. I am a current senior at Saloria Academy High School. Even if I don't look like one, I'm currently standing on a board. But mom, please let me know if I look tall over there. Please let me know. But I just want to take these next few minutes to talk about my experiences at Solorio and how much it has impacted me. I don't know if a couple minutes is enough, but I can surely try. So one thing that is very important to me, especially as a student at Solorio, is all the resources and opportunities that he has given me. So especially from freshman year, I've already been exposed to college info sessions and just many, many advising sessions with our post-secondary team or just lunch periods where I'm like, oh, there's a meeting at UIC, I'm gonna go there in my lunch period. And that allowed me to be in the Collegiate Scholars Program in partnership with the University of Chicago. So I know that's, wow, but um, it has truly been an honor to kind of be in that program since freshman year. And even with all grade levels, they have the equal opportunity to be accessed with all of these info sessions, even if they might not know what they want to do yet. We have so many different kind of just resources, if anything. And even our classes themselves, we have our you know regular classes, but we also have our kind of outside classes. So now as a senior, I'm in senior leaders, and there's also art therapy that partners with one of our programs where we get to meet with our buddies and kind of learn about disabilities and getting to interact with our buddies at the same time. So I think our cluster program is extremely amazing because of how much I get to meet them on a daily basis that maybe you might not meet them. But other than that, I would also like to give a shout out to some of our CTR residents here today. Ms. Kringle, Mr. Kankaleski sitting over there. Congratulations. <laughs> And our amazing art program and music program. I know Ms. Molinero is sitting over there. Hello, Ms. M. Amazing music here today. But as I am a senior going on just my college journey and filling out these applications, which are pretty stressful, I will admit, I would like to take the time and just say how inspired I was by one of our honorees today, Mr. Greg Case, who is sitting right there. Round of applause, please. But I was just so inspired on his academic journey, especially from Kansas State University to Harvard. I'm currently looking at the application right now as you speak. But I just think it's so amazing, especially with being the CEO of Aon and its development. So in honor of that, please join me in welcoming and congratulating Mr. Case to the stage, and not just him, but him and Aon itself.
I wish I needed it. <laughs> Alexia, where are you? That was the most incredible, incredible discussion of sort of what you've accomplished and where you're going. It was inspiring. Tremendous. Thank you. I would also say uh, the privilege of having you introduce me anytime you want to. Uh, come by, I'm good to go on that. It would be fantastic. Um, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say it is uh, an absolute true privilege to be here tonight to accept this recognition on behalf of Aon and Global Aon. Um, for over a decade, we have been so privileged to partner with AUSL as they help train teachers to the absolute highest standard to serve schools with the greatest need. Amazing. And by increasing the capacity of school leaders around the country, AUSL fulfills a unique opportunity to support schools and school districts nationally. This, this is an inspiring and profound mission. Again, truly amazing to make a difference in this critical area. So I just want to say on behalf of Global Aon to AUSL, thank you. Thank you so much and congratulations. <clears throat> now, um, as, the, as the Aeon video showed, I wasn't exactly what the Aeon video was going to be, but you saw in that video that uh, we are in the business of better decisions. And um, I got to tell you, tonight, there is no better decision I could ever imagine, no better decision than being here with all of you to honor, of course, the faculty and students of AUSL, of course. And, and to recognize and honor two inspiring leaders and friends, Mike and Robin Zavarovsky. 20, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, Mike envisions that aspiring teachers would stay and thrive in our underserved and under-resourced schools if we provided them with the opportunity, if we provided them with the training, the incentive to do so. And today, as you heard earlier, there are over 1,200 graduates from the Chicago Teacher Residency Program, and 20 of those alumni are here tonight to receive awards and to be honored. Fantastic. Also would say, Michael, back to you, to Robin. Again, you heard Aon, um, our entire mission is to enrich lives for the people around the world. You know what? You both, you both live that mission every single day. Truly, truly amazing. Mike's been instrumental in guiding AUSL as a long-standing board member and current co-chair. And we all know Mike. This is the definition of an inspirational leader in every way, shape, or form. Whether attending CTR graduations, advising students, or being a mentor to principals. He and Robin he and Robin set the leadership standard to which we all aspire. And they're committed to the idea that education is the great equalizer and that students should have access to excellent education in their own neighborhoods. And they're committed. They're committed to make sure this, this promise is delivered. I also want to say, because if you spend any time with Mike and you talk to him about his family, you realize Mike and Robin have impact that extends well beyond their business and philanthropic efforts. Their love and support with their three sons and six grandchildren ensure their legacy will continue for generations to come. And I know we have two of the three here tonight, and I just want to say, if I could, to Todd, to Matt, and to Kirk, where Kirk is tonight, I want to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something I know you already know. I'm going to tell you anyway. Your parents embody a rare combination of capabilities and attributes. Vision, mission, leadership, persistence, patience, and a conviction to absorb challenges and power forward when others retreat. Extraordinary. Tonight's recognition highlights how unique Mike and Robin are in the world we live in today. And I just want to say to Mike, Robin, thank you both for your extraordinary work and leadership. Amazing. <laughs> you 
It's now my pleasure to introduce a short video highlighting Mike and Robin's contribution to AUSL. Roll the tape. You have to ask yourself, where did his, where did his desire come from? Why is he doing it? You know, he could, he could just be Mike Zafirovsky, a rich guy who's doing good work and who's caring about uh, business. Uh, and that's the American dream, isn't it? Just be a businessman, be a businesswoman, be successful, and have all the good things that go with it. That wasn't enough for Mike. Mike wants this town to be stronger. Mike wants this country to be stronger. He knows it's not gonna happen if we don't educate our kids. Leadership is an action, not a position. And what Mike does is constantly show that he's always in action. Because of people like Mike, we can better dream about what's possible for our babies. If we don't have people who are willing to put us as a priority to help others also see why that is important, then there will be no progress. Ooh, where do you start when you think about the impact of AUSL? We could sit here for hours and I could tell you stories of each one of our students, from the programs that those students participate in, to the academic rigor that they had, from the beautiful, smart, intelligent, very well-trained teacher that was in front of them. I can tell you all those stories. And each and every one of those stories is impacted by the contributions of our partners specifically our Mike Zavaroskis. I met Mike and Robin as people who had shown an uncommon interest in children and in schools and made it clear that they would, they would really like to contribute to the betterment of the school system. Well, music to my ears. Well, his impact on AUSL has been profound because this doesn't just happen. The people who have made this an extraordinary effort and it's still going. And the reason it's still going is because the men and women in the classroom won't quit. They won't stop. Safarovsky understood that. He's a tough guy. He's a smart guy. He wanted things like that to happen. Well, we've been fortunate enough to have Mike visit us and the impact that he's had is just, he's just touched so many, you know, myself, but also to our students. Students that have come from a different country, from immigrant background, are learning English. He's a great role model. He just wears his heart on his sleeve. And whenever I have a conversation with him, he's always going back to what students need and what our struggles are. And so we are so fortunate to have people like Mike that have invested themselves to just helping our school go down the right path. When you make remarkable progress in 31 of the bottom schools, you move the whole system. And that's what they did. Mike and his family are the kinds of people that will make this city, make this country uh, prosper and do well, but we got to keep at it. As Greg and Mike Koldyke and so many others so eloquently stated, Mike and Robin are really just models um, of leadership. And if I could sum it up, I would say, you know, they show up. They show up for everything they do. They are completely invested in everything they take on, and it's uh, they're complete role models. Um, they provide access to an amazing network of resources um, and they encourage others to support AUSL and its vision of equity in education. They give of their time, their talent, and their treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike and Robin Zavrosky.
Wow. Um, Cardell, thank you for your kind introduction. Um, thank you for the amazing video. And Greg, thank you to you for the, the wonderful words. Mike and I are truly humbled and honored to receive this recognition. Um, our gratitude really extends to the many AUSL contributors and partners over the years for your partnership, your dedication, and the things that you've done to make the important work of AUSL possible. A special thank you, we have friends and family that are here with us this evening, and as Greg mentioned, two of our three sons, the two sons that live locally, Matt and Todd, are here, uh, which is such a blessing. And to those of our friends who couldn't join us this evening but are here supporting us from afar. Since moving back to this area 20 years ago, Mike and I have centered much of our time in philanthropic activities with organizations that focus on health, education, and the well-being of children in the Chicago area. Our involvement with AUSL and the Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago are truly a passion project for both of us. These organizations both provide physical, mental, social, and emotional development to Chicago's children. Lurie Children's Healthy Community work and focus in under-resourced communities is to provide children with access to health care and other community services. This work is so complementary to the mission of AUSL, working tirelessly to improve educational outcomes for underserved students with focus on educational, social, and emotional needs. For me, education was part of my upbringing. Many of my family were or currently are educators. I was fortunate to grow up in a small town where I could have the ability to safely walk to school, my elementary school, my middle school, and my high school, and remember having teachers who made a many meaningful impact on my life. I was able to attend college on scholarship and was fully prepared. This instilled in me a strong belief that quality education for all is an absolute necessity. So the mission, the vision, the transformational work of AUSL truly underscores this belief, making our connection to AUSL a natural fit. I'm also very proud of Mike for his unwavering commitment, passion, he's got just a little bit of that, <laughs> leadership, devotion, and tenacity in carrying on the legacy of AUSL. It truly comes from the heart, and I'm very lucky to stand by his side. Thank you, Robin. It's getting almost as hard to follow Robin as it is to follow Mike Koldyke. <laughs> uh, but let me also echo Robin's gratefulness for this honor as well as our deep respect for Mike Koldyke, who unfortunately is not able to be here tonight, for Don Feinstein, for the AUSL organization, and for the board, the principals, the teachers, and for the remarkable work over the last two decades. I also want to thank our co-chair, Cardell. I really want to thank you for stepping up, agreeing to be a co-chair earlier this year, and then also agreeing to be the, 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 the sole chair of the board as a 1-1. One -one. Madam Chairwoman has a wonderful tone to it, so Cordell, I know the board and AUSL is in great hands with you, so again, thank you very much for you stepping up and all you do. <laughs> Greg, uh, thank you for that. I have always enjoyed our friendship. Thank you for stepping up. You and Mamie have raised two great kids, and Aeon is certainly a pillar in the community, so thank you for all you do. Thank you to all the sponsors, the friends that are here tonight. We are really privileged and touched from your support. I believe from the bottom of my heart of AUS, AUSL's mission, that all students should have access to an excellent education right in their own neighborhood. I'm proud how AUSL has always set high expectations we used to say high expectations and no excuses. I know the last comment can be somewhat provocative in today's world, but I can assure you when we say high expectations, there's unwavering, unwavering resolve to meet those high expectations in a compelling and a holistic fashion. 
We've done that for the last two decades. I know that's only going to continue in the future. Of course, there's nothing more important in the development of young people than strong education. And it is impossible to say that word without really focusing on public education, the largest segment from K-1 to K-12 education. As many of you know, I'm a proud and appreciative product of the public schools in the United States. We immigrated to the United States when I was 15 and a half with my parents and my sister. My parents are factory workers, union in Cleveland. They actually never learned to speak the language. I went to a regular high school a few days after coming in this country, not speaking any English. My sons would say I'm still working on it. <laughs> but a few years ago, I gave you an episode about how a teacher, a history teacher helped me in a very challenging time. I'll tell you one more, it may take a couple minutes. And probably the funniest story I can tell you, it's just poking fun at me, but also the impact the great teacher, in this case, uh, Coach Rick Anderson, had on me. I was a recreational swimmer in the old country, but when we came here, the kids were teaching me how to speak English, we're swimmers. So, of course, as a 16-year-old at that time, you do what 16-year-olds do, you follow your friends. So I, quote, unquote, walked on the swim team. Berea High School, one of the best swim teams in the country, top two or three, top two or three in Ohio. So the headline is that I became a good swimmer. In, I was junior at that time. I became a good swimmer in two years, among the top ten in the state. Helped me get a full scholarship to college. But the bigger story is almost it never happened. And here's the funny story. I made a JV team as a junior, quite unusual. And I worked hard in the preseason, but never thought I would get to swim at all. And if I did, maybe at the end of the season. So very first meet, again, a small uh, swimming pool, but probably 500 people in one-fourth of this room. You have a swimming pool, and you have, the, you have the seats right next to the swimming pool. So as the JV meet was about to be over, we're swimming Canton McKinley, a powerhouse in Ohio. The coach comes and taps me on the shoulder and says, Mike, you'll get to swim in the 100-yard breaststroke. I say, okay, and that's a very last event before the varsity swimmers come. And the place at this time is packed. I mean, there's no any seats I'm walking up. I was probably the same size then as I was now. So people say, well, he looks like a swimmer. Big expectations. And then it dawns on me, I actually have never dove before. I mean, I was swimming. <laughs> so I'm in row one, and you have all these people right next to you. Does you think I've seen some Olympics when you dive, you're supposed to look up. And this is the breaststroke, and if you know anything about breaststroke, you dive in, you glide, you take a very strong pull, glide some more, take a strong kick. By the time you're done, you probably 70% of, of the first lap you're finished, you take two more strokes, then you, you go back in four lanes. So, 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 all those things are going through your mind, so I'm there, I dive and I look as far as I can. And you know, your hands are supposed to hit the water first. <laughs> was my knees hit first, <laughs> then my stomach, then my head, then my hands. So I wasn't dead on arrival, I was dead on start. I mean, I'm in the water two yards from the starting block. <laughs> By the time I, my head is up, I mean, the guys were finishing the first lap, they're turning around. I still remember my time, hour and 40, I mean, not an hour, <laughs> no, no, one minute, one minute and 42 seconds. So I was almost lapped in a four-lap um, four, um, race. So I'm, I'm embarrassed. You feel like you're two inches tall, and, and they decided I was going to quit. I mean, this is silly. What am I trying to do, be a swimmer? Coach Anderson came. This is Mike. <laughs> now you're not, only, you're, not, you're not going to quit. This is my fault. I did not do my job to get you ready for your first meet. So I told you the good story, the good swimmer, full scholarship, but that's what, it, that's what good educators do. They help students achieve their potential. And as you heard tonight, in the previous 19 years, I mean, that's what AUSL does. You, you heard Mike Kaldike, the wonderful principals, Victor, Matt Sullivan, and all the other, uh, Christy, Regina Roberts, uh, uh, Romeo and Crockett. I mean, this is the educators in this room. I want to simply say thank you for all you do for so many students. So much appreciated. 
I'll give you another example, and this is hopefully to stimulate some thoughts what each one of us can do above and beyond to what we do already. And uh, this person doesn't know I'm going to mention her name, but this is Gloria Harper. Gloria, if you can just stand up just for a second. <laughs> Gloria has made such a profound impact on so many students, including our three sons. Gloria was a chemistry teacher at Lake Forest Academy. Our boys loved her, she loved them. Then she got a huge promotion, Dean of Students at LFA, very prestigious private school, obviously in Lake Forest. A few years later, she tells us she's leaving to go to this place called Golden Apple. It's the first organization that Mike Koldike started. I said, wait a second, is that a bigger job? But her passion, for what, what uh, an organization can do for kids. And then fast forward, Matt, when he was at college, decided to work as an intern, uh, internship assignment between his junior and senior year. And then Gloria calls me at the end of that summer. She was almost crying to say, Mike, I cannot tell you the wonderful job that Matt did presenting to the Golden Apple Board of Directors. Wonderful topic, how to in increase retention of teachers in education. Soon afterwards, uh, Gloria and Matt introduced us to Mike Koldike, and Mike was right. I mean, I listened to his vision, Golden Apple, AUSL, and I just asked him, Mike, how can I help you? <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Soon, I was a proud board member at AUSL. And again, thank you, Gloria, for all you did for our family. And I'll just finish in a few sentences, but this is a reminder to all of us, to always to be open and to look for ways you can say yes on things that matter, whether it's your time, talent, or treasure. In these days of polarization and generalization, all, all of us know what somebody else should be doing. Very rarely it is us that are stepping up to say what we can do. So I encourage all of us, myself included, to look for ways to say yes to your calling, you can be a founder like Mike Koldak, you can be a leader like Don Feinstein, you can be a board member, you can be a volunteer, you can be a donor. The challenges and opportunities, particularly in education, are endless, but I would say also the personal rewards in the place that's most important to each one of us. So I'm proud of the work that AUSL has done for 20 years. I'm confident under Cardellis and Don's leadership, this, that's also going to continue for decades to come. Robbie, I want to thank you for coming and for help to make this what could be a record evening for AUSL. And of course, thank you for this honor and award. Robbie and I will cherish it for the rest of our lives. Thank you very much. One more time for Mike and Robin. Thank you so much for everything you do. And now to really get a feel for the work you have helped enable, enjoy the following video. So teaching at Curtis, um, the neighborhood doesn't necessarily have as many resources as other neighborhoods do. Sometimes we come in and the kids aren't, they're not ready because maybe they haven't eaten breakfast yet. Sometimes they need clean clothes when they come in. And here at Curtis, we're all a family. So as soon as the students step foot in the door, they're taken care of. And that's really what I took from the residency program. Whenever I see a need from my students, I need to step up and, and take care of that need for them whenever I can. And so here at Curtis, there are a lot of teachers that care and we're able to develop that caring teacher style, that strong teacher style by being a part of the CTR. And so I really feel like because of that, Curtis is thriving 
when it comes to teachers that really care about their students. And if it wasn't for the CTR, I don't think we would have as many capable and caring and loving teachers as we do at Curtis. My students in particular, they have higher needs than some of the other students in the building, simply because they are diverse learners. And that comes with a whole collection of hills that they kind of have to, to climb. Ms. Bennett has a question. Hey. I have these two bears. My friend Enoch, are these two bears the same? Mm -hmm. That's a small one, that's a big one. That's a small one and that's a big one. So if this one's small and this mm -hmm. one is big, are they exactly the same or are they similar? What? If they're both yellow, my friend Brianna. So I know that the bears are super fun to play with, but we just had two minutes to play with them. So now you have to listen to Miss Bennett's lesson. So scoop back. And then if this one's taller, then this one is what? He's tall. If he's not so tall, what do we say? It's not so tall. <laughs> Ooh, there's a word and it's called shorter. So if this one's I really feel that what I set out to do in becoming a teacher originally, which was filling the gap or filling the need that I saw some students having, I really feel like I'm doing that. I feel like I'm making a difference in my students' lives. And hopefully by being a mentor, also making a difference in the future teacher that my resident Kanga is going to be. Kind of dedicating one day in particular to Melanie. So tomorrow, do you need a lesson plan for Matt? Oh, or for, are you looking for Enoch and um, for Brianna? Enoch and for um, and Brianna during math time during ELA? We're going to continue reading the story. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to lead morning meeting. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'll do math while you continue to test the rest of them. Yes. Um, and then when Enoch and Brianna, Brianna. are in here, mm -hmm. um, then we're going to try the LOI activity. That okay. So them. you're good with that one. So we're going to start off by practicing our morning song, right? Okay. So it goes, good morning. Good morning, good morning to my friends. Good morning, good morning, good morning to my friends. My motivation for becoming a teacher. <laughs> the pandemic. This is truly an unprecedented situation. It's going to disappear. A statewide stay-at-home order. The school closures. I am looking at a three-year-old who is now learning via a screen and I'm watching what's happening in my world. I began teaching her at home and realized how much I loved it. Do I continue this path that I've spent so much time with and I've worked so hard for, or do I do what I'm telling my daughter to do, which is take chances and dream big? Then somebody cued me in on AUSL. And I decided to go ahead and start really looking into it because the way that they talked about it seemed like it really, really aligned with the way that I was thinking. You absolutely can tell that they believe in the city. They believe in these schools. They believe in the students. And I love that. So it pretty much became an easy choice. And next thing I knew, I was born. So during the summer, we had a lot of time together as a group. Uh, we took four classes in five weeks, which is incredibly insane, but probably one of the most challenging, academically fun things I've done, if I can say that. Then everything changed, and we started actually teaching at our sites, and I realized how exhausting it is to be a teacher who teaches with attention and purpose get the talking stick, and then you will talk. I want everybody to raise their hand 
if they know why we're using the talking stick. We have to respect each other's what? Voices. So when somebody is talking, should the rest of us be talking? No. No. So the week is Monday through Thursday. I'm here the entire day. I'm working with uh, different students and uh, respected as one of the teachers in this building. An urban environment is obviously absolutely different from a suburban environment. I think that there's different stressors, there's different situations that would take place. And I think that as a teacher walking in here, um, you have to acknowledge that. You have to know that when your students are walking in, that there's more that they're dealing with than what's at the surface. Good morning, sweet girl. How are you? Good. Did you want to get in front of Janaira? You don't? Are you okay? Did you want to get in the back? What's wrong? Are you tired? Okay. Did you not sleep? No? Okay. It's going to be okay. You're totally fine. Janaira, come on. Janaira, what is going on? I don't want to call mom and I don't want to call dad because you had such good behavior this morning. Right? You don't, you didn't get a sticker? Well, that's okay. Do you know that we give stickers in the afternoon too? So can you show good behavior in the afternoon and then we'll make sure to get you a sticker? Yeah? Okay. My DePaul days are mainly Friday and Saturday. So Friday I have uh, two courses and I take them back to back. So it's a, it's a full day at the College of Education. I look at my cohort and I don't think that there's been one day of being in their midst where I don't sit back and say, these people are incredible. They want this job. They want this position. They're change makers. I, man, sorry. I love, man, I'm so sorry. I love being a mom. When I walk into this classroom, I see her like in them and I see them in her. And oh, these kids, they matter. They deserve teachers who truly believe that they are capable of and that regardless of your environment, regardless of your history, regardless of what the world tells you you are, there's absolutely no limit to what you can do. And as a black mom living in this world right now, I fully believe that black children matter. And to have this opportunity and to have AUSL have this program where those who are in it can see the possibility of a better world, it's everything. It sincerely is. I'm so thankful for those who've not only cared enough about Chicago kids to put this together, but also trusted enough that there's enough good people in the world who will say, I'll sign up, I'll do it. Whatever comes with it, I'm ready. And I feel that if more people dedicated themselves to organizations like this, our world would look really different. need a minute. Wow, the courage to take that chance in the middle of a pandemic when our teachers became our lifeline is heroic. So please give her a round of applause.
And this is why we have you here tonight, and this is why we're asking you to help us continue this mission. I have to tell you, I come from a family of educators, like Robin said, so I believe that teachers are are as important in my children's life as they are in mine. Last year, they saved my life. Last year, they dedicated themselves on that computer to be the best they could for hours. So my child, who is seven years old and has a mom who tapped out at second grade math, <laughs> could survive and could make it. And he is a, a child from a two-income household with parents that can be there and provide everything. Just imagine these children who don't see themselves with a future, who don't know where the next meal with be, will be, and this teacher ties their shoes, asks them how they're doing, tells them everything is going to be okay, and then teaches 28 more children. That is heroic. And to train and support those teachers to not give up, that is what we need. We need those teachers in those schools so kids don't have to fight for a spot in a selective enrollment school, right? We need those neighborhood schools to be fantastic so I don't have to put that pressure on my eighth grader to find the one school that will accept her if she does well on a test. We need those teachers in those neighborhood schools to guarantee that these children understand. They're not going to believe parents. If you have a teenager, you know they don't believe you. <laughs> they believe the teacher. They believe the coach. And we need people who believe in those teachers to put their needs first, to inspire them, and to hold their hands through those situations. So if you have it in your heart tonight, donate tonight through your phone, check the silent auction items, and, and make a difference with what you have, is what Mike was saying. Take the chance and do what you can with what you have. Don't wait, it's very easy. Get involved. Education is what saved us, a lot of us here, and who gave us a bright future, but it's not the same path for every child. Okay, I'm done pontificating. Of course, right now, we have an inspiration coming to the stage to recognize these amazing teachers as well. Without further ado, I want to introduce to you the Executive Dir Director, Dr. Donald Feinstein. Well, it's been uh, an unbelievable, memorable evening so far. I had a plan. Uh, Mike Kodak and I were going to come up together and talk about 20 years ago when I was in his office, and his office was on Clark Street, right across the street from the school district. And he had this idea about training teachers in an innovative, unique way and Irony Duncan used to come ac run across the street, and he never, if you know Irony, he doesn't wear a jacket. To most events, he doesn't wear a sport, ja sport coat, jacket. He's like a working man superintendent. He used to come across the street, and Mike would share this idea about this residency program in, in 2000. And I was going to say to Mike, and he can't be here tonight, he, he sends his regards, his regrets, but he's in here in spirit. Uh, and he would say, let's train in a new way, a year long, instead of training just student teaching for eight, 10 weeks, let's train teachers for a year. And then send them to schools that are high need and they'll be the catalyst for transformation, for unique change and, and for better outcomes for, for students. So um, obviously, you always have a contingency plan. So that plan is to let you know that um, we, we have trained 1,200 teachers. And he wanted to just acknowledge like three. And I said, Mike, it's the 20th year of Gale. Let's do 20 for 20. And look, 20 for 20, if you think about it, it's less than 2% of the graduates 
They have gone through the program, and, and let's show everyone here the breadth, the depth of who we are and what we've accomplished. And, and these are the men and women where the rubber meets the road in the classroom. It's, it's the hardest job you can have in education. They, they're resilient, they persevere, they have grit, they reflect, they have compassion, they have passion, they have urgency for the work. And they're here now, they're standing there, and I have this great pleasure of introducing for the first time, and of course, you'd say, where did this award come from? It came from the 20th Year Gala, the, the, the Martin J. Kodak Educator Leadership Award. And this is for these wonderful men and women who, and, and here, here's what's it's so amazing. Everyone believed in his vision of equity and fairness, equal educational opportunity, leveling the playing field. Let's have every student have what our children had and experience and access and opportunity. And, and let's make that the, the general um, way of doing public education. But these individuals, they didn't think about it and join us. They actually took the leap of faith they were the ones who believed in the vision and actually changed their job, changed their trajectory, changed their life, changed their journey to believe in this residency program in 2001 and what was it going to be like and where do I go, how do we do this? And, and they were the true pioneers and they're still um, surprising us with their excel, excellence and, and just their supreme way of delivering quality instruction to students. So I'd like now to call their name, and uh, I'd like the director of the, the uh, managing director, Michael Whitmore, and our managing director of external relations, Shane Caterino, to come up. And as I call your name, I'd like you in, in, to accept this award on our behalf. That you've been, your brilliance, your dedication is just outshining all of us because you did it, you believed in it, and you're continuing spreading love and, and, and care to all the students under your jurisdiction and obligation and supervision. So the first award, awardee, Chelsea Bennett. <laughs> Latanya Buckner. Sarah Buhayer. Marquis Butler. Marquis could be here tonight, so we will accept the award on his behalf, like just like at the Grammys. Shirley Chavaria could not be here tonight, but we will accept her uh, award on her behalf. Teresa Chavez. <laughs> Leah Gunther. <laughs> Demetrius Hurd. You see, Demetrius works at Chicago Public Schools, and why he's on his best behavior, his boss is here tonight. Pedro Martinez is in the, is in the back, the new, super, the new CEO of Chicago Public Schools. We're honored and proud to have him here, and we wish him the best of luck over the years. He's the right man for the position now. He knows Chicago, and he is empathetic and caring for all students across the city of Chicago. Jessica Kimbrew. She's actually on our team. <laughs> Michael Kankaleski. <laughs> Greta Kringle.
Melissa Levine could not be here. I accept her award on, on our, her behalf. Thaisa Lau. <laughs> Terrence Murphy. Kate Peterson. Not only is Kate the director of the Chicago Teacher Residency Program, she was in our first class. She's been with us for 19 years. Regina Roberts. Lakeisha Triplett. They all know Michael. Juan Uribe. Javier Velasquez could not be here tonight. I accept the award on his behalf. LaShawn Whitney. One more award. I, I do know Mike Zabrowski will uh, approve of this award because uh, Mike's been an unbelievable supporter and, and has uh, worked with him and has been involved in his school. You know, um, Victor Iteralde was, uh, when I was the principal, he was the founder AP at Chicago Academy. And that was 20 years ago when we opened. He, he, when we opened the school, he was my AP. And then he became the principal of Chicago Academy. And then when the city gave us Solorio a few years later, I brought him over to Solorio because he wanted to stay at Chicago Academy. And then I saw some little student running around Solorio in Gage Park. And I said, Victor, that student looks like you. You belong over here. And he ended up at the founding principal of Solorio uh, Academy High School. He's been with us 20 years. So he gets the Martin J. Kodike Principal Leadership Award. Victor in the rally! Well, um, we're going to stay up on the stage, and I think Anna's going to come back up. And they want to have a photo shoot. At the, this is coming to the conclusion of the program. I want to th thank Greg Case and Aon. I want to thank Mike and Robin Zabrowski for their philanthropy. Their you know, these are all volunteers. I want to thank Boeing, who started with us, and Roosevelt, and now Sherry Carter. I, I want to thank Bob and Emmy King and, and, and Tony Miller, who supported Army Duncan in Washington at the Department of Ed, and Cardell Spangler for, for stepping up, and for Ken Miller and Ann, and, and for Greg and Kim Wass, and for Raj, and, and for everyone else who believes in what we do and want to continue to do the good work to bring more quality teachers to the south and west side to change the outcomes for students to give them an opportunity for a better life and thank you for being here with us and celebrating our 20th thank you again i think i think we need a final applause for all these educators on stage tonight Thank you so much for being with us tonight. I really appreciate the honor of allowing me to be part of this amazing event. I think we were gonna take a quick look at the thermometer to see how well we're doing, but I felt like we finished so strong, right? Let's see, oh my goodness. 
That looks wonderful. I'm not going to attempt to read the number because I told you I tapped out in second grade and I went to school for journalism. But thank you, thank you so much for having me tonight. Have a wonderful evening, everybody, and congratulations once again.